also the pharmacy on our fourth year of pharmacy that is one of the most frequently asked questions even though i'm sure we've said it like trillions of times not pharmaceutics masters of not pharmacy, nursing baby. not medicine there's me local drug dealers baby <laughs> <laughs> So in a pharmacy course there are four years and after four years of your degree you have to go out and do a placement year Now this placement year is what you call your pre-registration training and then after you do your pre-registration training you have to do sit a pre-registration exam and after you do that exam that's when you become a registered pharmacist yeah. if you pass yeah. and what does a pharmacist do? A pharmacist ensures the safe supply and distribution of medicines. Yes. Ooh. Sell, supply and distribution, distribution of medicines. So there's a lot of pharmacy schools, they all have kind of varying entry requirements. Some might be all A's, some might be two A's and a B, some might be one A and two B's. It's all up to you guys. Go and do your research and make sure you're applying um, and you can actually fulfil the needs of the um, university. Don't apply for something that's got extremely high grades and maybe you aren't able to attain those. Just be realistic with yourself. Generally, in terms of like A levels, from when we were applying, chemistry was the only thing that was compulsory for you to do. Most of them said that biology was desirable, but it wasn't compulsory. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them may say maths is desirable, but only at AS level. So yeah, just emphasizing what Zoe said, it's very, very important that you go and check which universities that you personally want to go to. Because I know I was applying to Nottingham first, and Nottingham wanted two A's and one B. And Kent, where I ended up, wanted one A and two Bs, and both of them needed chemistry. To I would medicines. recommend also that you do biology yeah, before we'll coming see, yeah. to um, your course, because some people don't, didn't do biology before starting a pharmacy degree and found it a little bit difficult, because yeah. they, they, for us it's like revision, for them it was completely yeah, brand yeah. new learning. Pretty much on our course there's a lot of numeracy that you have to do. I know I have friends that they felt like they should have done maths at um, A level because they feel like they're struggling a bit, or they were struggling a bit with numeracy and thought it would have put them at an advantage. Um, I didn't do A-level maths. I think it's just a personal um, preference. Yeah. It's not by force you do maths. The, the maths we do in um, our course, I want to say it's, it's very basic. It's, basic. it's, basic. it's just applied. It's yeah, just it's applied. you need to yeah. switch your brain on. Yeah. 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 And apply. What are the career <laughs> prospects as a pharmacist? I would say it's a good course to do, you know. It's pretty much a vocational course and um, you shouldn't really be without a job even like you know a lot of people they leave their degree they have to start scrambling for jobs you're not really in that situation you there's get good a job. job security there's good job pharmacy. security you can be a hospital pharmacist a community pharmacist and you can be an industrial I guess pharmacists but in each of those sort of um, different sectors there are many th there are many like subcategories so in a hospital you can become a specialist mm -hmm. so you could be a specialist in renal so renal is kidney you could be a specialist in kidney medicines or you can become a specialist in uh, oncology which is cancer medicines or you can become a specialist in pediatrics which is children medicines on top of that you can go into a hospital pharmacy and not even touch medicines anymore but still have a pharmacist role so that's a role called like a role called quality assurance so that's in the hospital pharmacy and there's more. And there's way more there. In industrial pharmacy, um, you can go into something that's completely away from pharmacy. You can go into marketing, you can go into advertising, HR, you can then stick to kind of, um, I guess, the drug side of pharmacy and go into research and development. You can go into manufacturing, and um, there you'll be given a role. Um, let's say it's like drug discovery lead, you won't even be known as a pharmacist anymore, it'll be completely different. Yeah. I think the point we're trying to make here is that if you study pharmacy and perhaps you haven't entirely um, liked the course, um, don't feel like you have to stick to just community pharmacy or hospital pharmacy or even industry. If you thought, oh, you know what, I should have done law, you don't have to have done a law degree to become a lawyer, feel free to go and do the law. Yeah, I don't know what it's called, law bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, or like Ivy was saying, you can go into um, different kind of business roles in like big companies or analyst positions. We've gained a lot of useful skills from being at university that can be transferred into other sectors that they really do appreciate. Mm -hmm. So as we said before, do your research and don't feel trapped in pharmacy. It's not the be all or end all of your life. Like venture out and find out what you like. Make sure that you're happy. Yeah, you can even go, go into academia. Yeah, exactly. You can be a professor, professor mm -hmm. do extra research, get your PhD. It's just really, really loads and loads, loads, loads of endless things you could do as pharmacist. <clears throat> Everyone says that there's a big jump between um, A level and degree, and the question is, do you guys agree with that or disagree with that? Or I, I disagree. I feel like first year was like A levels again. It was easier than A levels to me. I think it was easier. I think it was easier for me because it's like number one, I knew 
it wasn't gonna go towards my grade, so I was quite light, light about it. Mm. And um, second of all, like Uwe said, like we done chemistry and we did biology. Mm. It was just light revision. And they don't really expect much from you in, in your first year. <laughs> no. They just, it's literally kind of like, remember the slides and regurgitate and you'll get- And you're good. So yeah, you get first. first. Yeah. You get first. Um, in our university anyways but then as the years go on they expect you to do more reading around mm. the subjects mm. um, have a deeper understanding and like I said pull things from different modules um, and collate it so that you have an integrated understanding and present it in an essay form. From first year to second year for me I found it difficult what about you? It was like okay now it counts and I haven't been serious enough in first yeah. year <laughs> now I'm in trouble <laughs> The quantity of information we had to take and then the different kind of um, examination style, mm. the new addition of new kind of competency exams. So mm. in pharmacy you have to take a dispensing exam. Um, Our university. Yeah, a dispensing exam where it's like you're dispensing the drugs, that's what you normally do in a pharmacy if you're working in the community, um, sometimes in hospital as well. Um, and I think we had an OSPI. Yeah, it was difficult because obviously we've never done any of those kind of exams before. Mm -hmm. so second year, the, what, what I put myself through in those last <laughs> months, yeah, at the end of summer I said to myself, I am never, remember I told you, yeah. I am never going to do this to myself again, ever. There was, I think it was our second to last exam, yeah. guys. I woke up, let's say, at nine. I revised, 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 revised till it hit like 12. I slept and then I slept for three hours, woke up at three, we had the exam at nine in the morning and then revised till the exam. That's how much, that's, <laughs> that is how much I needed to revise for that exam because, hey, <laughs> second year, you know, I said, I'm not taking this attitude into third year. And then, yeah. Third year came. Third year came and it was a matting again. Second to third year, it wasn't that terrible because we were used to not sleeping by that point. Now we're in our fourth year and this is probably the most insane jump so far. Um, so you spoke about all years. Um, <laughs> we're at the beginning of our fourth year and it's like... Matty. It's crazy. It's like... It's a matty. It's, it's yeah. Matty. Speechless, matty. like speechless. It's just like, there's so much work to do, but they won't tell you to do it. They won't tell you. Like, they're going to leave you. That's one thing that also happens at university. In first year, they, they'll let you know you have coursework. They'll, they'll make it very known, email you, give you a lecture, you have coursework. Secondly, you start to realise, oh, they're getting a bit more laid back with this, telling you you have coursework. Third year, they stop telling you. Yeah, my family is a mother. There's so much work to do. As in, even today, they tell you to do chapters and chapters and chapters of reading. You get to the lecture thinking, okay, he's going to even question me on the reading. It's completely different. It's just so much independent learning, it's crazy. Yeah. I think it is because of the fact that we've moved on to Masters. Yeah. You have to think that Masters is like postgraduate level, now it's like, really i feel like this is really what university would have like should have been like yeah you know, i'm really a university student doing extra reading doing things by myself and actually having to use my initiative to do things yeah, yeah. i don't think in the other years it was really like you just do what you need to do yeah, yeah. to get every assessment that we have for the year has been given to us and we have to manage our i'm, I'm sure yeah. there'll be other students like thinking yeah but that's what you do at university nah. Nah. A matting, like assessment after assessment after assessment after this, assessment this after assessment. We have four pieces of coursework to give it. And our dissertation on top. Mad up, sad up. This time, one time. On top of that, we still have lectures. Mm -hmm. I have lab, my, well, pretty much half the week. I have lectures half the week. If yeah. you didn't know, majority of schools, pharmacy is a nine to five course. So that's pretty it's much what we're dealing job. with right now. So on top of the nine to five, you're going to the uni, you're doing your lectures. You obviously have to go home and revise. No? You have to revise and you have to study. This is not a game. Some people also work and some people have to run YouTube channels. <laughs> <laughs> On top of that, when your email hasn't been answered, don't be hit. Don't understand why. <laughs> okay. We are suffering. <laughs> okay, so um, what I like to clear up is in regards to competencies, a lot of them you have to attain a grade of 70% or attain a percentage of 70% in order to pass. But for your written exams and your um, coursework from years, first year to third year in our university, you have to attain 40% to pass. And in fourth year, you have to um, attain 50% to pass. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of um, the numeracy exam, at our university the pass mark is 70% like the UVA said but I know in other places it is much higher like in Nottingham it is 90% um, and the purpose of the numeracy exam is to show that you are able to do pharmaceutical calculations mm -hmm. because as a pharmacist you will be able, you will need to be able to calculate um, 
very weird things like maybe weird. how a, a drug is cleared yeah. through the body yeah um um someone's bmi even though that information is on the internet <laughs> and then with your dispensing exam as you know all of all of you at one point in your life have been to a pharmacy mm. it's the person who is standing behind the counter and is basically more or less dispensing you the drugs so we need to be able to show that we can screen a prescription to see that it's legally valid so there's no legal um problems with it to be able to see that it's clinically valid as well so there's no there's no like med medical like issues with it as well and then be able to give it to well dispense it to a patient label it and do some other stuff all according to the law so that's what the dispensing exam is and like you said again 70 percent and the, the reason why i think our school and many schools will have the pass mark at 70 percent is because you know your pre-reg examination the pass mark is 70 percent in order for you to register as a pharmacist mm -hmm. um with oskis or ospies they're basically um like mini stations where you are tested on your knowledge so it may be you might be tested on your numeracy, you may be tested on your, like how you interact with a patient. So many times we've had uh, actors who have posed as patients and we've had to listen to whatever problem they are and we will pretend to be the pharmacist in that position. So whatever issue they have, we have to solve it. <clears throat> OSCEs are oral examinations. And I think the reason why they started doing it is because um, compared to other courses, maybe like nursing or medicine, pharmacy students don't get as much interaction with patients and so we don't get as much chances to be able to like consult a patient face to face and so OSCEs are able to like examine us and see um, if we are faced with a patient how we will interact with them and to see if we're able to do it efficiently. Questions, how do you go about obtaining um, placements during your course? So in um, pharmacy it's very good and it's almost a necessity for you to obtain placements by yourself um, during the course of your degree. Your university, well, some universities do help you get placements, but a lot of them don't, so you need to do that because it's, it's even one of the requirements by the GPHC for a student, um, you should have obtained placements by yourself. So how do you go about doing that? So like we said there, different sectors of pharmacy you can do, hospital pharmacy, community pharmacy, industry, and then there's a whole other plethora of um, jobs that you can do as pharmacists. But for these um, three sort of sectors, Community pharmacy is the easiest place for you to get a placement. All you have to do is walk into your any any independent, random independent store on the high street, walk in and say, I'm a pharmacy student. I was wondering if you have any spaces available for me to come and just do some work experience for one week. And that's one placement sorted for one year of your um, degree. Uh, when it comes to places like Boots and Lloyds and Superdrugs, and um well, and well, well pharmacies, pharmacies you have to apply online now when you apply online these things are pretty much well for boots it's totally random but in first year and second year there's no questions you just pretty much put in an application and they just pick whoever they pick randomly for some other application you have to answer some questions and then they'll they might interview you and they'll pick you through that uh, for placements wise for hospital um, placement you have to apply online as well. Um, another thing that you can do is you can try and volunteer at, at a hospital. The hospital is quite competitive for placements. Most of them don't take second year students, they want to take third year students who are trying to get into the final year. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So if you try to get a placement in second year and you didn't get one, don't be disheartened. But you can try, and, um, if you have a job in the hospital, so whether it's an admin, um, whether you're a um, healthcare assistant, or even volunteering, um, it might help to like boost your application and then make you look better because you've had some kind of clinical experience. So try and get anything you can. If you can, in first year, get a job in a local pharmacy, like a Saturday, just be just that you're working on Saturdays, I'd recommend doing it also because it's just great to show off on your application. Industry pharmacy, I was lucky enough to kind of know someone who knew someone that worked in a specific a smaller kind of industrial company while did placement um in second year and so i was able to apply with my cv through that way but what i would recommend is uh, find out what industrial companies you want to apply for and they all also have a online system industrial pharmacy is quite competitive they don't take as many students so it is quite hard to get into but it's not unattainable for placement as well be afraid to talk to people as well me personally, I'm a stalker, so if you have LinkedIn, find people that work in community, find people that work in hospital, and attack, and like, industry. <laughs> industry, attack them, like, hi, my name is this, and I'm just wondering if you offer any placement, you know, speak to people, if you work in a um, hospital and you're working in admin, or you're working in, even if you're working in the kitchen, 
find your way to pharmacy once you're in hospital you're in mate go to the pharmacy and just be like oh hi i'm a student um do you guys offer any placement you might find someone that is nice and might be like oh yeah just come for a week and also if you decide you want to be a hospital pharmacist you still should get some community pharmacy work experience because like we said it's only in third year summer that they're going to be accepting um, pharmacy students so when it comes to writing your application um, for a pre-registration year which is the placement year you need to have shown that you have an interest in pharmacy and you can show that via your community pharmacy work experiences even if you can't um, get experience working in a hospital or anything like working in different environments whether it's retail or any other sector they are beneficial because you do pick up skills wherever you go um, and I think as well maybe keep a diary for like okay what have I learned in these places because mm. when you apply for community or you apply for hospital or you apply for industry they always they don't really care sometimes if you have that much experience you just want to know what have you learned and how can you bring that um, or help us in our team mm -hmm. where we are kind of thing. All of the experience and stuff is in order to obtain a pre-reg and the pre-reg is, is in order for you to become a pharmacist. You cannot become a pharmacist without doing a pre-reg. It is compulsory for you to do. Mm -hmm. So even if you gr graduate and you get a first and you don't get a pre-reg place, there's no way you can become a pharmacist. So, and one question we got is, um, did we go we enter our course the conventional way and I definitely did not which um, is what's the conventional, which the conventional way is uh, you're in six form you say I want to do pharmacy you apply to some places on UCAS um, you get an offer you go to university yeah okay I've never written a personal statement in my life um, I do not know what UCAS looks like um, why should I I don't know any of these things because in, it, for me I was going to gap here uh, but um, I live in an African household. Um, my right of a gap year was taken away from me and I was forced into university. Um, Are you happy? Because you met us. I'm happy I met you, but it was not my plans. My plans was to take a gap year. So I entered for clearing because, and I entered for clearing, let's say school started about September the 20th. I applied September the 7th and I was in university in two weeks later. I applied for um, my accommodation my uh what's that thing student student loan like one week before and that was it so it's not conventional at all um similar to uva i didn't come through the conventional route so um i initially applied for medicine um after not getting into any university no one interview um less stumped really i actually did decide another degree and um, i did radiotherapy and oncology for one year um I love the content of the degree, particularly the oncology. However, I did not like the um, work experience. It was kind of very repetitive. It wasn't for me. So I dropped out. And I dropped out, we worked in parents. So I dropped out and I just felt, I was at home. I felt elated, like, yeah. And then, like, literally, reality, like, punched me in the <laughs> face and said, hello. You live in an African house, are you crazy? Like, your mum's expecting you to go back to university next week. What are you gonna say to her? So literally, anxiety struck. I went online, like, I've just typed in like, medical related courses. Oh my God. I thought, found pharmacy, found um, a couple of universities that had um, spaces in clearing. Our university is one of them. I, um, I put like an online application, literally 20 minutes later, they called me like, oh, do you want an interview? I'm like, okay, go. Bish bash bosh. Landed up in here, mate, with these lot. Did you tell your parents then? I literally called my mum afterwards, like, hi mum, I just dropped out of uni. What? But don't worry, I've got another place. I'm going to go study pharmacy this year. Which mum said, I don't understand what you're saying right now. <laughs> I'm going to call you back in one minute. Call me back to school. Okay, Zoe, now speak very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I dropped out of uni. Why would you do that? I know you didn't like it, but I thought we had agreed you're going to finish first. No, 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 no. I'm like, no, but it's fine. I'm going to start another degree. It's okay. It's me, I went through the conventional room. So I wanted to do dentistry because I heard that they get some coins and um, I didn't get the grades that I needed in order to sit the UCAT test, um, which is the test you need to do before you apply. And I started looking for places like, sorry, okay, medical related degrees, blah, blah, blah. And pharmacy, looked at the salary and stuff like that. I thought, okay, hmm, seems like a pretty good degree. Science and I get to talk to people and things like that. So yeah, I did my personal statement for pharmacy and I wanted to go to Nottingham. I came to this university for my interview and I looked at the site and I thought this place makes me want to vomit. <laughs> I'm not going to step into yeah. I'm not coming to this university. Even if I have to take a back here, I will not touch this place. Anyway, didn't get um didn't get into Nottingham and 
I was left with my, is it insurance? Yeah, yeah I think it's called it. How have you stayed motivated during the course of your degree? Particularly with the work workload in pharmacy and the amount of assessments and the amount of stuff you have to do, you may find it, you may find it difficult to stay motivated. And if money was what pushed you, um, maybe you need to go and, and look at the money that's involved. <laughs> mm. Go and look at the money of a local pharmacist in a private hospital. Yeah. That will push you to yeah. be like, you gotta oh, work. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna work. Because <laughs> let's just be honest, some people did pick pharmacy or pick a particular course um, or a particular job because they know they're going to be buffing in coins. <laughs> yeah. Whatever motivates you, use that to fuel you. If it's yeah. because, oh, you haven't come from an affluent home and you're trying to make your mother or your this person proud, maybe have a conversation with that person and just, you know, just recenter and refocus your mind on what it is that actually got you here in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that will push you on to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe just looking back on some previous successes. So this was something that was hard for me and I got a good grade here. If I could do it then, I can do it now. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are Christians or, or you, you believe in a higher, putting your faith in a higher power will propel you to push forward and will support you. To get to where you wanna be, <laughs> keep you going through the course. Yeah. yeah. You know when it gets really hard and you're thinking, oh my God, I look at it like there are other people that have come before me and they've been able to complete this degree and they've been able to get the grade that they want. So there's nothing different between you and them. Like your mother says, you don't have two, two heads. heads. So <laughs> um, you just need to, for me, I'm just like, just just do it, just do it, just do it. You can survive just like that other people survive. That's saying, well, what motivates me? It's just thinking of the like long-term reward. Think of like long-term gratification. Like maybe right now you can't see the end goal. This is getting difficult, it's hard, but you know in the end it's gonna help you reach another place where you need to be in life. Like what she was saying, like long-term goals, what I like to do is I like to plan things. So when I finish this year, I'm gonna go on holiday and I know that in order for me to enjoy this holiday, I want to have a good grade because if I go on the holiday and I get a bad grade, I'm going to be thinking to myself, this was in vain, this was yeah. stupid, this I'm going to feel like a douche. So, um, yeah, I always say work hard for the work hard for your holiday, work hard for your holiday and um, you'll be living the vida loca. <laughs> Also, do stuff that you like to do. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit down and read your book 24-7. Go out, have some fun, watch a film, eat some Chinese. Make sure that you have some time. Do not become your degree. You know, there's there's something that revitalises you, that yeah. gives you a vim. Yeah, do that. Even if it's going home to see your mum, do it. <laughs> and it's important to also do that because, like, with pharmacy they want you to be human beings so when you're applying for things like hospital careers there's always a question is what are your hobbies you can't come here and just say you've done nothing in your life apart from study pharmacy and if you have some friends in your course they will motivate you and push you and stop oh, you're not around they'll come to you are you're right no, it's, get it's, up off that bed it's so important <laughs> to have friends in your course this is like my my motivation squad we're like cheerleaders for each other try and get a friend to have a course with a similar intensity mm -hmm. um, because if you are someone who's doing a pharmacy degree and you have other friends who are doing degrees that maybe they have to go in like half a day here half a day there um, and you're literally in university every day it can feel very it can feel lonely it I can think. feel lonely you no can feel understand. drained you can feel like there's no one else in your position but if you find other people that are going through the same thing as you you, you won't feel like you're missing out on as much as if you didn't have those people around you first year students of pharmacy when they take to learn your drugs the 50 drugs or whatever it is 25, 25 drugs they take to learn in the first year just, just learn, learn the them. drugs this is advice from somebody that didn't learn them <laughs> just learn them because you'll find yourself in second year maybe even third you're still trying to learn those first year drugs mm -hmm. they put on that paper you get to fourth year and you've got 180 drugs to learn and you still only know those five <laughs> <laughs> And also in regards to um, like showing of your application, if you can be in some kind of pharmacy society and not just be like a member but have an active role, or if you can be like a nice champion, I think that these are all things that will help you stand out on your application. You know, be a student rep. There's no everyday ACS society. That's all you're part of. Yeah. <laughs> 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 When you um, become a pharmacy student, um, you will get a holy grail called the BNF, the British BNF. National Formulary. Mm -hmm. Now that is pretty much your pharmacy bible. Pharmacy bible. 
you need to learn that you need to know that you need to own that you need to sleep with that you need to eat with that you need to shower with that it needs to be calm no, i'm joking <laughs> but re you, need joking. To, you need to know your stuff okay that is where all your knowledge is from it's a it's um it's a pharmacist on on paper yeah yeah, you definitely see pharmacists in hospital walk around with their beer yeah. like yeah. a sword. I cannot pass a year or I wouldn't have been here without this whiteboard. Literally, I took this from my class in triple science in GCSE. Okay? <laughs> without the knowledge of my teacher, I took this whiteboard <laughs> and the rubber and ever since this is what has got me through my exam period. Also, just take it seriously from the beginning because you don't want to Let's say you want to get like a 2-1 or you want to get a first by final year. If you've been blagging it second year, blagging it third year, you're going to have so, or blagging it till second year, by third you're going to have so much catching up to do. Yeah. You're going to be so stressed out and then you'll feel like, oh, I haven't been able to attain or achieve a certain goal. So just take it seriously from the beginning and work hard from the beginning, even though first year doesn't count. Take it seriously. But do you know what, the, the thing about pharmacy, I'm not trying to say it's not, it's not good to get good, but obviously it's fantastic to get a good grade and that will always it's for your own dignity but the good thing about pharmacy is that the end goal is to become a registered pharmacist mm -hmm. and in order to become a registered pharmacist you have to pass the pre-registration exam mm -hmm. at a 70 percent level mm -hmm. so even if you get a 2-1 and you wanted a first for your degree the important thing is that you pass pre reg mm -hmm. because even if you got the 2-1 and somebody else got a first you will all pass at the 70 percent level yeah. mm -hmm. so you're all as competent as each other and yeah. that's what's most important once you become a registered pharmacist no one is really going to be too bothered if you got the 2-2 two -two because at the end of the day you still passed mm -hmm. at the national 70% level. Mm -hmm. And even in our applications, nobody's really asked us for a grade. Mm -hmm. They just no. ask that you will at least get a 2-2 two -two at the end of the pharmacy degree. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about application of knowledge. It's not about writing exams when you become a pharmacist. Anyway, I'll see y'all later. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this. But right now we out here. We gon we gon log off. LFL baby. Mm -hmm. Relax. Yeah. Till next time. LFL baby. LFL.